and welcome to another episode of the Bible says this, what say you? The word of God says in Psalm 33 verse 4, the A clause for the word of the Lord is right. Now listen, got another passage I want to read to you here in Isaiah uh, chapter 5 and verse 20. It says this, woe unto them that call evil good and that and that call good evil and that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. He's, that they're warned against this and that's exactly what's going on in the state of North Carolina. Our governor, Governor Pat McCory and the legislature passed some common sense legislation a few days ago. Uh, in the House of Representatives, 11 Democrats crossed over with the Republicans and voted for this uh, HB2, House Bill 2, and uh, in the Senate, uh, the, the vote was 32 to nothing because all the Democrats walked out and the Republicans voted for it and passed. And basically, here's what the, the, the bill said. Here's, a, here's the gist of it. Persons who use the bathroom have to use the bathroom that their birth certificate suggests that they should use. So therefore, it's basically saying that we put into law in the state of North Carolina that businesses cannot be forced to allow men to use the women's room or to allow women to use the men's room. You know, this transgender thing that's going on and the transgendered male wants to be able to use the women's room and the transgendered female wants to be able to use, want to be able to use the men's room. Now, here's the kicker. A transgendered male is actually a woman and a transgendered female is actually a man. So... What they're asking people to do is to participate in the charade that's going on. So we're supposed to look at a guy with a wig on and a dress and who has had facial softening surgeries and he, he perhaps he has his body pumped with estrogens and he's had uh, implants put in to give him breasts. Uh, but uh, from the uh, waist down, He's undisturbed. He's still biologically what God made him. He's a man. And vice versa with the uh, transgendered male. It's a woman. A woman who has in many cases had two perfectly good breasts removed. Can you believe it, my friends? Uh, my heart goes out to, uh, I think about women who have uh, gone through uh, uh, breast cancer and who has had to have their breasts removed and and who have had reconstruction surgeries and the multitude of challenges that they've gone through uh, as a result of having to have uh, uh, that dreaded surgery and yet here are we have women who because of a voice in their head telling them that they're a man who would actually go and 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 uh, allow their bodies to be mutilated that way and after they've had these changes and they're pumped full of uh, testosterone and it lowers their voice a little bit they've had surgery to get rid of the Adam's apple and they've done things to try to masculinize uh, their bodies uh, they want to be able now to go into the men's room and uh, use uh, uh, the men's room uh, to the extent that they can. They still can't use a urinal because from the waist down, she is what God made her. So, the legislature, the legislation, the legislators passed the law that this would not be and that private businesses in our state can still do what they want, but but churches don't have to do this. Private schools do not have to do this. That any place like locker rooms, any place where women are at various stages of undress, in these areas, men would not be allowed. It's common sense legislation. Um, I wrote a, a letter. I'm going to post a letter that I wrote to the governor. I have, I have a copy of it here that we're going to make sure you, 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 you see and be able to read. Uh, dealing with uh, what's going on. And we know we saw the NBA. and They were threatening to, to pull out saying that they may take the All-Star weekend somewhere else. I say to the NBA, nothing has changed. Charlotte, the Queen City, 
is the same Charlotte, the same Queen City that it was when you signed the contract, when Charlotte won the bidding war to get uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, weekend there, the All-Star weekend. And uh, the, the law that the Charlotte City Council passed never was enacted into law. The ordinance was never enacted into law, so nothing change. So I say to them, hey, uh, uh, you better stick with the Queen City. It's a great city, has the great infrastructure, has also a minority owner, Michael Jordan, who is part owner of the Charlotte Hornets. Now, are you going to stiff Michael and, and, and uh, uh, do this to this great city and uh, for other businesses who are saying that we may not want to do business with North Carolina? I say to you, if you choose not to, you do it at your own peril. North Carolina remains in the top five states in the nation to do business with. Sometimes we're number two, sometimes we're number three, but we, we're mo most of the time we're in the top five. It's a great state. We're doing good, and I thank God for Governor McCurry, uh, McCurry and the legislators for passing this uh, legislation. Now. I just did an interview with WRAL on this matter. What I've decided to do when I do interviews uh, with the media, I like to take also the interview and let you see the unedited version. Now, I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't know how they will edit it. But this is the unedited version of an interview that I did just a few moments ago with WRAL News. All right, let's talk about HB2, okay. your position here. My position is it's not, it is common sense uh, legislation. Uh, no one can argue that it is, no one can make a truthful argument that it discriminates against anyone. It hasn't changed anything. We believe that men should use the men's room and that women should use the women's room. And who was about to be discriminated against, in my opinion, were women. Up until the vote that took place in Charlotte, up until that vote, women in this state, when they went to a ladies' room, had uh, assurances that the individual who was in the ladies' room, whether they were black or white, tall or short or whatever, that it was a female. And if while they were in the ladies' room, that if a person entered into that room, that that individual was female. I think that that is a reasonable assurance. This law does nothing to discriminate against any lesbian, any homosexual. It does not discriminate against any bisexual. And it doesn't discriminate against any transgendered person. Because everybody knows that a transgendered male is a female. And a transgendered female is actually a male. So there's a charade that people want everyone to participate in, but this law just simply states that businesses uh, cannot be forced, private businesses cannot be forced to, um, to uh, uh, provide, change their sincerely held beliefs and provide a bathroom to a person who is, uh, to allow a transgendered male to go to a female bathroom and vice versa. Now, in, in terms of uh, the government assurances, I think that it is common sense to protect the bathrooms for all parties involved. North Carolina is a great state to do business. Other states that are threatening to not do business with us, they do it at their own peril. We remain in the top five, sometimes in the top three of places in the nation to do business. They're about to have the final four. Uh, in Houston, it has the same policy uh, that we have and no one is going to boycott uh, those games. The NBA will do themselves a great disservice to try and break the contract with, with, with Charlotte and, and the pullout. It's a great state, and this state is a state that's good to everyone. So I support the governor, and it's bipartisan legislation. 11 Democrats uh, uh, in the House of Representatives voted with the Republicans. In the Senate, 32 to nothing, the Republicans voted for it. It's bipartisan. It's good law. It's a common sense bill.
You said in your statement that really nothing is changing because the right. NBA had made these decisions right. before mm -hmm. Charlotte enacted its law, and now nothing is changing. Right. But some could argue that the message has changed. The perception is tilted as North Carolina is a state that has actively come out and said no. Yeah, North Carolina is a state that has actively come out and said, we think it's a good idea for men to use the men's room and women to use the women's room. Now, what? I don't get it. That's, that's what North Carolina said. And North Carolina said we need to put that into law. Uh, I'm, I'm married. My wife told me that she would be very disturbed if a, if a man walked into the bathroom to use the bathroom where she's in there, my daughter, my granddaughter, and I do believe and you have a job to do, but I think you wouldn't be, uh, uh, would feel quite uneasy if, if I walked in in a dress and, and self-identified as a female when I am a male. I can't self-identify as a white guy, can I? <laughs> right? You would, you would take me seriously, would you? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> okay. And that's all North Carolina is saying. And 70% of North Carolinians agreed with the law. It has bipartisan support. 70% of the state agreed with it. It's the state of North Carolina. I hear what uh, I think his name is de Blasio uh, is saying about our state. But if we, listen, we have more people moving from New York to North Carolina than we have moving from New York, North Carolina to New York. So I, I suggest that the, that the mayor uh, look out for his own state or his own city. North Carolina is doing just fine. And we're going to be fine. And I wholeheartedly support the government and the legislators that pass this common sense bill. I think that's it. Anything else? Nothing else to add. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate, really appreciate it. it. Hey, there you have it. That's my position. And anyone who calls that uh, discrimination, they're calling good evil and evil good. Hey, the Bible says this. What say you?